Science Inquiry is what children do in order to answer scientific questions about the world around them. And that's a really useful definition because the key word in it is do to answer questions. So it's actually an active, an active process of coming up with a question or being given a question and looking for a way to answer it. And a lot of work has gone into this to identify the ways that children do this in a primary classroom and actually they're the ways that people carry on and do it all the way through right through PhDs and research. There's five main ways that children can answer scientific questions or do science inquiry. So observing over time, actually looking at how things change over time, not intervening, just observing and working out how often we observe, what observations we make, what measurements we make. So how the apple tree changes over the year, how the ice cube melts on the table, how the chicks change as they hatch and grow. That sort of observation over time. Then there's identifying and classifying, the sort of thing that underpins really, if you think about it, most chemistry and biology certainly. How are things the same? How are they different? So from your young children sorting things by whether it's a it's round or whether it's square, whether it's soft or whether it's hard, to real detailed classification where we might be testing, so actually carrying out a test to see which of these materials conduct electricity, which are, which are the, um, the densest, that sort of where we're testing to be able to classify. So identification, what is it? How is it the same as something else? How is it different? That's a key way of answering a scientific question. Then there's the sort of tests we do where we're looking for a relationship between two sets of data. That sounds quite highfalutin, really. What we're all talking about is, do daisies grow most in the middle of the field or at the edge of the field? Do the children with the longest legs jump the furthest or not? We can't, we can't control those sets of data. The data is there and we have to look for a relationship between it. And that's what we're encouraging children to do. Can they see a pattern? And actually, the, there's a real purpose to this because it's those patterns that then might suggest cause and effect which can be tested further. But looking for patterns is a key way that children can answer questions. Fair testing, where we think that we that something's having an effect on something else, so we control all the other variables. For example, how does uh, changing the height of the ramp affect how far the car travels? We make sure that we use the same car and the same surface, and we're just changing the height of the ramp to see the difference it makes. So fair testing. And then there's the questions that children can't answer practically. They can't actually physically go out and collect the data. They can't um, make the observation first hand. So they're using other data from secondary sources. And in the primary classroom, that doesn't mean always going to a book or to the internet. It may mean talking to an expert. It may mean uh, finding a useful source of information that can answer that question. It may mean using somebody else's data, but it's research using secondary sources. So all of those five types of inquiry make up working scientifically and that's how it's identified within the new programme of study.